And here's the real compelling question, will antivirals work? This is a virus that's sort of coming into a white blood cell and it's hunting for its receptor. And then it's going to attach to this cell. This is a retrovirus attaching to this cell. Now in this virus, we don't know what that receptor is yet in humans. We actually sort of have an idea but from the mouse work, but we don't know for sure. But there's an attachment step. And then the virus enters the cell and fuses to the cell. And in HIV, there's these entry inhibitors and fusion inhibitors that prevent that. So those are potential therapies. If it were the same receptor, I, I kind of doubt it. <coughs> don't think we'll be using those particular HIV drugs. Then it gets into the cell. And when it gets into the cell, it dumps its RNA into the cell, it pokes a little hole and the virus comes in and then that RNA comes out. And we're DNA, not RNA. Our, 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 our nucleus or our cell's DNA. So it has to be turned into DNA. And to do that, it uses an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. And that turns the, see, I knew before the thing told me I am smart fart. The, <laughs> no. Anyway, it turns RNA into DNA. And that is a wonderful target for this virus, the reverse transcriptase inhibitors, because then the DNA can integrate into the, into the cell. Now we have integrase in integration inhibitors also in, when, uh, in HIV integrase inhibitors, but they are fairly selective for HIV. I don't know that they would be effective in another retrovirus. And then when the cell's activated and its DNA starts making stuff like this, it has to be, it makes these great big long proteins and those proteins have to be cleaved into little pieces. See, I'm sinking here. And that's the protease uh, inhibitor line of chronic, uh, in HIV, the proteases that cleave are inhibited and that prevents that piece from being torn up. Then all these bits and pieces assemble themselves over on the cell wall and they butt off, bop, and there's a virus. And that's how viruses are made. So in, we have um, entry inhibitors, we have reverse transcriptase inhibitors, we have integrase inhibitors, we have protease inhibitors, and then um, all those put together is the whole repertoire of drugs that have been developed over the last 20, 20 years or so for, for HIV. But be it known that there are literally thousands of compounds in the pharmaceutical companies' shelves that they developed for HIV that weren't as good as the things for HIV that are approved, but might be the very perfect thing for this virus. So we're not starting from scratch here at all. The other thing about this virus, and this is just from what um, Dr. Coffin said at the chronic fatigue meeting on Friday. I'm not a retrovirologist as brilliant as these guys, but I, I can parrot them pretty well. So Dr. Coffin said, because this virus doesn't seem to mutate very much, it's a great target for vaccine, um, <coughs> vaccine trials. And when you asked, what about antibodies? What about antibodies? If we, if we vaccinated people, to this virus that already had the virus, but we could goose up their immune response to this particular virus. That's what they're doing in the HIV trials. They vaccinate infected people. So you might suppress the virus with an antiviral and then goose up the immune system with vaccines so it could really work hard on this virus and then, and then release them. So you can start postulating. Isn't it fun to be able to postulate therapies I mean, it's great. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm lying awake at night thinking all these things. I'm just like, ooh, we could do this. Ooh, we could do that. It's good fun. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm an immunologist. What could I say? Of course, one of the things I think about is immunomodulators, drugs that would either quiet immune activation or enhance cell function are, are very appropriate. Okay, so what's already out there? Well, Amplogen. Amplogen's an interesting drug, and they actually showed a little amp they had eight patients that had Amplogen data that they showed at the CFAC meeting that Dan showed, and it had a mixed result. In some cases, Amplogen was very effective in suppressing this virus, and in some cases, it was not in those eight patients. So that's not very many. But Amplogen sounds kind of promising because it's an antiviral that's immunomodulator that enhances natural killer cell and cytotoxic T cell function. So it's even more intriguing than before in my mind. I think Amplogen's got some real potential. Immunovir, isoprinogen, some of my patients are on this medication. It's, um, only had phase two trials, it hasn't had phase three trials, but it's more or less a, a nutraceutical, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amino acid. But it, it is also an NK cell enhancer and cytotoxic T cell enhancer that may have some antiviral effect. The cell therapy, I referred to this ex vivo cell therapy, that's when I, some of you were in this study I did in, I don't know, it was 93 or 1993, it was 1993, where we took um, 
a lymph node from a patient and we grew the cells in the, in the, in the laboratory and we made literally a, a transfusion of white blood cells. Mac did that. He was busy, busy transfusing my patients with white blood cells, um, their own white blood cells. But in the test in the laboratory, we had grown them, sort of fixed what was broken about them. And then we got some very, very nice clinical responses in that phase one that study that never got to go to a phase two study for lack of funding. And then finally, the, this makes cytokines that are either directly antiviral or immune enhancing more, more interesting. The nutraceuticals, they have less work done. Omega-3s are uh, anti-inflammatory. Um, the mushroom extracts that the Japanese use to enhance natural killer cell function. But these aren't studies that had you know, placebo control data and, and, and looked promising. Uh, CoQ10 at, at a, roughly 100 twice a day that really was anti-fatiguing and, and enhanced um, cell functions. TNF inhibitors, we've that we have a couple of few patients on TNF inhibitors right now and I'm seeing some nice responses if their their cytokines are way whacked out and they're super, super um, revved up. That's a natural killer cell, the little guy killing that target cell. That's an Epstein-Barr virus infected target. And there's that little, lymph, little white blood cell doing its job. That's what we're trying to do. So the white blood cell is infected with virus and you want these cells to go in there and kill that, that cell. And uh, so um, the other question with this is, okay, you got one virus, but what if you that virus plus a couple other viruses? What's the role of all these viruses all together? What about HHV6, EBV, enteroviruses, and this virus? If we say all these viruses are doing their work together, um, it might be necessary to treat more than one virus. It might be necessary to design a study that has the retrovirus piece and the herpes virus piece because sometimes these viruses lend each other machinery to make their infections more potent and damaging.